we are going back with another practical use case of AI agents. This is where I'm going to be showcasing how you can automate a type form with the help of AI agents that are deployed from Vectorship and not having to code one single bit. We have been taking a look at Vectorship a lot recently because it's possibly the easiest way to work around with an integrated framework of no code generative AI solutions. And this is to build agents, assistants, chatbots so that you can automate any task. Now, previously, I would showcase applications from a broader point of view, but I really want to go a little bit more in depth on certain tools like Vectorshift because you can practically get a lot out of it with the help of AI, obviously. Now, if you're interested, I had actually made a lot of other videos on Vectorshift before where I have automated email workflows as well as various chatbots. So if you're interested, I will be leaving those links in the description below so that you can get started. Now, what I'm going to accomplish this video is that I'm going to be automating a type form. A type form is a basic interactive form where you can collect data from various sign up pages or even feedback pages. And what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be automating the type form so that whenever someone inquires something from the type form, the agents will that are being deployed from Vectorship will automate a response back to the person who inquired from my form. So with that thought, guys, let's get straight into the video and showcase the capabilities of Vectorship. Sorry for being repetitive, but this month we had insane partnerships with big companies giving out subscriptions to AI tools completely for free. These are tools that will streamline your business's growth and improve your efficiency. Just being a Patreon this past month, you were given access to six paid subscriptions completely for free. Not only do you access these subscriptions, but you gain the ability for consulting, networking, collaborating with the community, as well as with myself. You get access to daily AI news, resources, giveaways, and so much more. If you're interested, check out the Patreon link in the description below to gain access to these benefits. Hey, what is up, guys? Welcome back to another YouTube video at The World of AI. In today's video, as I mentioned before, we're going to be automating this type form. So what you want to do first is click on the Get Started button and sign up with a Google account. Once you have done that, you'll be then sent over to this pipeline dashboard where you're going to be creating your own. So what you can do is click on the new button over here. You're going to be creating pipeline from scratch, but you can see that there's various other templates that you can choose from. So what we're going to be doing is creating a pipeline from scratch. Now, this is the dashboard where we're going to be working and creating and deploying our AI agents. Usually, if you are to see in my previous videos, you would put down an input node and an output node. But since we're going to be having it so that type form inquiries are sent to the input node, it will be then directed basically with an answer that will be generated with the large language model and then sent over to a Gmail node. This is where you have an input and an output where the output is heading over to the Gmail node. And this is where it's going to be answering the inquiry from the input and then sending it back after it has retrieved their email address and generating a response basically with the solution and which will be then sent back through in mail. So it's super easy. You have the same basic foundation where you have an input and an output, but this time the output is heading over through a Gmail node. So I have went along and I have created a hypothetical type form where I'm going to be retrieving the inquiry from the customer, the email address, as well as their name. And basically, I'm going to be having it so that all the information that is gathered from the type form is going to be then sent back to Vectorshift, which is going to take it in three separate input nodes. So we're going to have an input node for the name, the email address, as well as the inquiry. So now that I have inputted the three fields from the type form, we have the name that we're going to be collecting, the email address, which is the second node, and then thirdly, we have the inquiry. So what we're going to do now is then input two large language model nodes. You can choose from these different large language models, even an open source model, but I find that using OpenAI's model is best at the current moment. So what we're going to be doing is that we're going to process the email address to one large language model node and we're going to process the other two inputs such as the inquiry as well as the name and we're going to fuse it with another large language model node and i'll explain this in the next section so why did i create a separate large language model node for the email well this is because i want it to parse the specific information that i'm retrieving from the type form which is the email address meaning that it will only retrieve the email address so that there is a clear recipient as to what it will be then sending the generated response to. So what I can do now is then basically connect this email to this prompt over here. 
and I gave it a system prompt where your job is to extract the email from the prompt. And for example, if you receive text john at gmail.com, you will respond with john at email gmail.com. So it will only retrieve the email address and it will respond only with that email address. And we can then go forward and then connect our Gmail node with our email address. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be just creating an email draft. You can have it so that it will send the email automatically, but I think it's better if you have human intervention involved in this type form uh, or this workflow, sorry, because you can then review that type form. You can then edit that response, obviously, and then have it then sent afterwards with a manual send button. But so in this case, we're going to then select the create email draft and we're going to then have it so that the response is then connected with the recipient where it will send the email address that it retrieves from this type form and it will then input it into this gmail node as the actual recipient and not the body of the text so this basically means that it will retrieve this email address so that it can then send that response to that email address that it basically found from the type form so you may be wondering, what's the purpose of the second large language model node? Well, this is a node that we're going to be using so that it could write a concise email. And this is based off of the inquiry as well as the name that we're going to be retrieving from the type form. So what I basically gave it as a system prompt is that its job is to write a concise email response to the problem. You start the answer with dear, where it's going to retrieve the variable, which is the input node. And it's also going to retrieve the problem. And something else that I'm going to be including is using context to answer the problem. And now you may be wondering, what's the purpose of context being integrated? Well, this is because a large language model is good at answering generic inquiries. But say if we want to get a more detailed response, we're going to be providing a context of something, for example, of vector shifts documentation to get a better detailed response. And this way we can have it so that it will reference the context before it generates a generic answer from the large language model. It will utilize the information to get a better response out to the person who is asking the question. And that's why we're going to be adding a context variable. So what we're going to be doing now is first we're going to set aside firstly the name variable where we're going to then define it with a variable squiggly line and what we're going to be doing now is that we're going to have this name connected all the way back to the node which is the input node for the name so we're going to then have it connected back over to here and then we're going to set another variable which is going to be the inquiry this is where we're going to name it inquiry and then we're going to add an input variable this is going to be the inquiry variable and we're going to have this connected to this input node over here. So I went along and I added a knowledge base reader. This is where you can just head over to the knowledge base tab and then just add a knowledge base. You can create your own quite easily. But in this case, I basically have it so that I had gave it my own name, my own description, and I provided my own knowledge. This is where you can see that if you are to click on the edit knowledge base, you can see that there is a YouTube URL. There is also a recursive URL, which means that if I am to provide it a link, for example, of the documentation, it's going to be able to go through each and every component of this documentation page. It will crawl through it. It will be able to extract all the information that is provided based off of this documentation page. And it will then be able to have it so that it will then provide the large language model node that relevant information. And this is where you're going to be able to easily add documents. You can add different integrations, URLs, recursive URLs, as well as archive papers. And this is a great thing about vector shift. Now, once you have set your own knowledge base, in this case, I'm gonna have it so that I'm creating a basic inquiry for if you have any sort of problem or question with vector shift, I'm gonna be providing an answer. And basically, this type form will be then sent to anyone who has that problem. It'll then answer that question. So what I did is then is that I connected the problem to this large language model node and I also provided context and this is where I then connected this context to the knowledge base and it will also connect it to the input inquiry. Then what I did is that I had then connected this response back to the body of the Gmail. Now you might be wondering what should we do for the subject? This is where I created a basic general text node. This is where it's going to be used to then have it so that it will then send this 
response or this text input as the subject header of that email. So this is the subject header that I have for the Gmail. And there we go. We have our workflow automated where if there is any sort of inquiry that is being sent about VectorShift, it will then provide a response based off the pipeline that we have created. Now, what we're going to be doing next is having the type form connected to our pipeline. And this is where you would need to click on this deploy as button. Once you have done that, click on automation. It'll then bring up this new window. You're going to be selecting the application and you're going to be selecting the type form. Once you have done that, we're going to connect our account. So once I've done that, I'll be right back. So once we have connected it, we need to then specify the events it responds to, which is going to be new entries. We're going to then configure it where we're going to then specify what do you want to call this automation. So we're just going to call it just uh, inquiry form. And once that is done, we're going to then select the trigger, which is going to be the Q&A type form. This is something that I just recently created, which is this type form over here. Now, once you have done that, you just need to simply match the records. So we have three input nodes that we need to match to the right, correct questions that we have created on Typeform. And once that is done, once you have connected the name to the input name node, as well as inquiry node and the email node, you can then just simply click save. Now, you might have an error in finding those those different inquiry nodes because there is no previous interaction with the Typeform. So what you can do is publish your Typeform send in a draft type form and once that is done you should be able to see it in the configurations now once you have clicked save you want to make sure that you deploy it and what you can do to see if it's actually deployed is head over back to the pipeline dashboard click on automations and you should see if your inquiry form is deployed or not and we can see over here that you need to deploy it because it's not showing the deploy button and we can see right now once it shows the undeploy button it is fully running so now let's see if this is actually functional. So we're going to go over to the type form and just create a bot response. I'm going to name, say my name is Mahi. I'm going to then provide an email address, which is in the world of AI at gmail.com. Click enter. And what I'm going to describe my inquiry as is that what are the use cases for vector shift? And then I'm going to then submit it. And if we are to go back to our email, we can see that if we go to the drafts, it has then constructed that response. And we can see that it utilized the subject header. It also inputted the email address that I use from the type form. And it also utilized my name. And we can see that it gave a good, concise answer about what VectorShift's use cases are. And this is the great thing about VectorShift. I did this within like around five to 10 minutes and I was able to automate a type form within that span of time. This is the capability of this amazing tool and I truly recommend that you take a look at this if you haven't already. And this is why I keep on making videos on it because it's so easy to basically automate anything with this tool. Now, I'll leave all the links as to what I use in today's video in the description below. Make sure you check out the Patreon page if you want to access our private subscriptions that we give out completely for free. Make sure you follow us on Twitter. Great way for you to stay up to date with the latest AI news. And lastly, make sure you guys subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like this video, and check out our previous videos so you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. But with that thought, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Spread positivity, and I'll see you guys fairly soon. Peace out, fellas.